Hello and welcome back. All right, so we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're actually going to talk about the business side of things a little bit more. So yesterday we had Mike Batt from Fairfax County Economic Development Authority. And today we have his colleague, John Blair. Welcome, John. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, the, the business side of things is very important. We talk a lot about you know inspirations and aspirations, but the business side of things is how things get done. So we're very excited to have you here and talk more to us about that. So please go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, what do you do with Fairfax County? Sure, so um, I was born in Washington, DC, grew up in Rockville, Maryland, grew up in Montgomery County, went to University of Delaware, did an international relations degree there, and then um, did my MBA in Fairfax County at George Mason University. I spent several years working, uh, supporting uh, businesses, business development strategists and so forth, and then got involved with economic development, working for the governments of Germany and the UK, really focus on companies in the United States looking to expand overseas. Um, for the past three and a half years, I've taken it stateside and I've focused on American companies, specifically those in Fairfax County, helping them grow in Fairfax County, as well as approaching companies outside the area in Silicon Valley, in Boston, in Austin, other parts of the United States, in telling the story about how Fairfax County is a really good place for a tech business to do business and supporting them with a wide range of services. And um, I was very interested in, in doing outreach to esports because we see how there's a great deal of tech talent in those who are involved in esports, play games and so forth, and they're involved in gaming. And so that's why we're here today. Mike and I have been working, Mike Bat and I have been working closely to build relationships with esports companies and organizations. And so we're really appreciative to be part of this um, summit with Game Gym um, this afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for being here. I mean, it, it's it's always good to build these relationships because you help each other. So uh, we're definitely uh, very happy to spread the word about Fairfax County and that it is a great place for, for, for tech and for esports. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how Fairfax County supports uh, businesses and especially businesses in the gaming and esports industry? Well, so what we do is um, we meet with businesses one-on-one. -on -one. We help them if they're looking for a um, office space, we help locate real estate for them. We um, talk to them. We also support growing businesses, whether they be esports e and other emerging technology or even well-established businesses with one-on-one um, -on -one meetings where we're learning about them and tailoring the services that we provide. Some of the things that we do as an economic development authority is connecting them to grants and incentives. So we're a conduit for money from Virginia, from the Commonwealth of Virginia, Virginia Economic Development Partnership. And so if a company is growing at a large clip, uh, we can provide them with, with funding to help support that growth. And then by learning about them in these one-on-one -on -one sessions, we can really tailor them, uh, tailor our approach and involve them in events, make introductions, really be there to support them. And because our funding is provided by Fairfax County government, there's never a charge for any of the services we provide. That's incredible. That's really, that's awesome. Now, actually Mike mentioned this, there are a lot of companies that are headquartered in Northern Virginia. So for, and that are national companies or even international companies. So for anybody who is looking to either start their company in Fairfax County or move their headquarters here, what advice do you have for those folks? Well, so, um, and also be remiss to not mention our talent initiative. So that's another part of our services. We're helping companies with virtual career fairs and also one-on-one -on -one meetings to help them grow. So if someone's just starting a business, we have a lot of resources for them, like Entrepreneurship 101, which is a workshop um, that's free that they can attend that tells them all they need to do to start a business here in Fairfax County. And also we can connect them with um, counselors um, that are free as well from SCORE which is a federal program, They're retired executives who've been through um, running businesses themselves and want to give back. And um, so if anyone's starting a business, it certainly would be great if they were able to contact me or a member of my team. And we sit down and talk to them and find out if it is a good fit to have a business, a tech business in Fairfax County and what we can do to, um, to grow. And uh, the answer of course is, is yes, it is a good fit to have a business in, in tech business in Fairfax County. So. We'd love to help them. 
That's absolutely incredible that you have that resource because honestly, you know, when folks think about starting their own business, they have the idea about maybe the product or the service or, you know, what is it that they want to do, but then the nitty gritty about, you know, what licenses do I need, right? Or clearances or permits or things like that. So having the resource that you're talking about from these retired executives, that's absolutely invaluable. That's, that's amazing. And then also a um, uh, good point. Thank you is that we have the, those retired executives, but all of us have business experience on the team. So we are a team of about 40 people and everyone from our CEO um, to, um, to the business investment managers who serve the purpose of like meeting with companies uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, they really have experience. They've worked at companies like IBM, um, Microsoft, you see Mike worked almost 25 years at Microsoft or working with startups, getting them off the ground. So we can know, we know a lot about the pitfalls that, that companies may face in the early days, and we're there to help them and give them advice as well. That's awesome. I just keep being amazed because, you know, you provide all these services at no cost to the companies, which is really rare. I mean, that kind of, those kinds of services are usually pretty expensive. So that's, that's incredible that Fairfax County provides that. So um, in terms of the tech industry specifically, what kind of plans do you have uh, for, for growing the tech industry in Fairfax County? Well, so like we work with a lot of partners and um, just one other thing that I wanted to mention is that we also have a communications team that's very active in getting the word out um, for companies that are doing very innovative things and in, um, in growing in the county. But um, a couple of things that are exciting of, among many is that there are two tech campuses that are being developed in Fairfax County. One is Virginia Tech and the other one is George Mason University. And we're working regionally here. So Fairfax County um, is working as part of a NOVA Economic Development Alliance. And so we have 10 jurisdictions that include the major counties in Northern Virginia, Loudoun, um, uh, uh, Alexandria, Arlington. We're working well to, together and they're moving forward the talent initiative. and um, Everything that they're doing as well is really growing us in terms of a region to be competitive with other areas around the world, including Silicon Valley. We're the new Silicon Valley out here, yes, yes. Northern I, Virginia. I like, I like that tagline that we that we put up there. Thank you. I like it. I like it. Um, so tell us about the Fairfax County EDA and uh, how it's helping developing more jobs. So um, what we do is like we have that talent initiative. We have quarterly uh, virtual career fairs, which are free for, of course, the job seekers to attend, but also free for the companies. The companies have access to over a thousand job seekers at each of these career fairs. And it's in a virtual format. Um, we, this this um, talent initiative is a little bit over a year old. And so we had to quickly pivot from having the idea of putting on in-person events to having virtual events. So this allows um, job seekers to go and talk to to potential recruiters, potential um, employers about what their skills are and, and how they, they would be a good fit in the organization. And it also gives the opportunity of the companies to explain why it would be good for these job seekers to be part of their team. And um, we also meet with companies face-to-face -face on a regular basis, as I mentioned, to really learn about them and retain them and make sure that, that they stay in Fairfax County. And we're listening to them about their needs and um, we, we want to, to actually attract more businesses outside the area. So even though there's tens of thousands of job openings here, we, we certainly want more because we, we want to grow the, the community. And we also do some, some outreach for job seekers outside the area um, to, to look at Fairfax County as a place as they're graduating from school. And in fact, this, um, this career fair coming up on May 20th is for recent college, college graduates. We want them to see, and we're, we're looking at 60, over 60 universities being part of that. And we do outreach even on the West Coast. So we want those job seekers to, so of course there's other large urban areas across the country that are good places for tech. But we want them to seriously consider Fairfax County as an option because it really is a great place to live. Not just to work, but to live. Absolutely, and Mike and I talked a little bit about that uh, yesterday because this area is just incredible because you you have everything that you really want. I mean, in terms of like you have the city right nearby and so many big companies and government organizations are headquartered here. So you can work for literally anybody, but at the same time, it's so green. Like you, can, you just walk five minutes and you're at a park. So it's 
it's an amazing life out here. Definitely. I agree. I agree. I'm, you know, as I said at the onset of our conversation, I was born in Washington, D.C. I grew up in Maryland. Now I live in Northern Virginia. I think the whole entire region and area, and even within driving distance, there's just so much for us to do out here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now tell us more about the the career fair that's happening this Thursday, May 20th. I know you mentioned it a little bit, and obviously we talked about it with Mike, but I want to remind everybody because it's such an amazing opportunity. And like you said, this one is specifically tailored to new graduates. So it's going to have a lot of opportunities for, for entry-level jobs. So um, what types of jobs can we see and how can folks participate? Well, they can go to work in northernvirginia.com. Uh, on that page, there's a, um, a link for the virtual job fair, and they can register for free. And um, at, in the job fair, there's going to be all kinds of different jobs, from software development, junior software development positions, to QA testers, to UI design, um, jobs that would be um, well-suited for someone who just recently graduated from school. And um, all they need to do is just register. And in terms of the number of companies, there's about 25 companies participating. And they'll have some of the larger ones, so the big system integrators, government contractors, Fortune 500 companies, um, including AWS, um, so Amazon, uh, as well as a number of smaller ones, so um, companies. So, and in, in the conversation that you'll have, it's virtual, it'll be a few hours long on May 20th, you'll have the opportunity as a job seeker to understand what the company is about and also showcase your talents or your aptitude, your skills, and what you want to do in your career. And so um, we found that this is a, we've had um, over five uh, career fairs so far and different uh, for different, geared for different um, groups of folks. And we find them to be really successful. And not only are the, um, the companies satisfied, but the job seekers, many jobs have been filled through these career fairs. That's, that's great to hear. I'm glad that they've been successful. So give us some tips about preparing for the career fair. So uh, you talked to us about registration, but you know, should folks have a resume ready? Is there anything else like cover letters? Uh, what about like, you know, should they be ready to be on camera, things like that? Yeah, so I think that they, uh, all those things that you just mentioned, Maya, they're perfect um, um, preparation tasks. So definitely have a resume ready. Cover letter, it doesn't necessarily have to be absolutely complete, um, but if they had some positions, if they went to the website of the companies, it's all listed on the virtual career fair, you can see what companies are going to be um, at the career fair, and you'll see what jobs are available. They may have additional jobs that are not listed that, um, that uh, they would like to, to screen for, but you'll see many jobs. Um, they at least have 20 jobs available at each, on each, for each of these companies. And so they'll be able to understand. And then in terms of writing a cover letter or creating talking points on their success, see what the job description is and what in terms of your career you've done and, um, or your school, maybe school projects that, that would fit well into. Because of course, this is for recent graduates. So uh, many of the companies are not expecting 10 years of experience. But um, I've actually uh, been working with one uh, software developer that's, that's helped us with, with a particular project. And um, in that work that he's done for us, uh, there's a lot of good things that he could, he could really like tout as skills and experience. And so really like deep, um, dot, um, do a deep dive on what you've done in your schooling and your special projects to make you more marketable to these companies. That's great advice. And uh, like we heard some advice yesterday, make sure to to think about your experience, but also tie it to uh, how is that going to translate into results at the company that you're you're looking into? Definitely. And so if you're looking at your experience, um, how have in terms of numbers, how has that reflected in success? So um, I definitely like when I talk to folks about their job seeking, I always want them to like distill what in their background has, has translated to success for a company, whether in numbers. Um, so um, if you were able to build a software or you were able to, um, to improve a particular process, what efficiencies was gained percentage-wise? Um, how much more was able to be done? These are like really key um, me metrics that, that are really impressive and really um, capture the imagination of the, uh, of the recruiter and say, 
yes, we have, we want someone who's able to be task oriented, but also success oriented and is able to distill what they've done because in their career, they'll have to do that as well. I mean, they're going to have to present uh, as they're doing a project, they're going to have to present to the business folks and other colleagues, what have they done over the last uh, six months or even over the last day? I mean, as we know, Agile is a methodology where you're talking about what you did yesterday, what you're planning on to do today, today, and what your obstacles are. So really to think about your accomplishments and what you plan on doing in the future, if you take it even down to that micro level, it'll be successful um, in, this, in this conversation that they're gonna be having this after, this um, later on this week in the virtual job fair. Absolutely, and another thing that I think about is uh, performance reviews. That's another reason that you really should be good about uh, quantifying and being able to explain what is it that you did so that you, once you get the job, you can, yeah, at your annual performance reviews, can explain what value you continue to bring to the company so that you're able to ask for promotions um, or you know, move into a different department if you'd like. That's a really good point, Maya, because when I look at resumes, um, I just do it as um, to help friends and other people I know with their resumes, and I've done this many times, is that uh, one of the biggest problems I see with resumes is that they focus on duties. Like mm -hmm. I did this, I did that in terms of like my responsibility was X, Y, Z. When really the recruiter is looking at what are the accomplishments? Because if someone has a particular job, the, the, you know, you could say I developed this software. Well, everyone who's in that particular unit probably is playing some role to develop that software. But what did you do that sets you apart from others? Because if you focus on accomplishments in your resume, then um, you really make yourself more attractive and you put yourself in a better light uh, among other candidates. So, if, of course, if everyone follows my advice, it's going to be tough for the recruiters to make a decision. <laughs> but um, I want everyone to succeed. It's okay. We're giving a leg up only to our viewers, but okay. no, actually, I, I absolutely agree with you. You know, we, we want to spread this advice far and wide because everyone is different, right? Everyone's going to bring something different to that job, but if we're going to can give them those basic tools, like here's how to write your resume, or here's how to um, answer some of those tricky interview questions, you know, then we're really helping everybody succeed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I actually wanted to ask you about the resume. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that you've reviewed many, many of those to, to help friends. What are some of the basic tips do you have about writing a resume or a cover letter? You know, either in terms of content or even in terms of length, you know, sometimes it, it's really difficult to figure out like exactly what to put on there. Well, so in terms of a cover letter, a letter I wouldn't make it any longer than one page. And then I would like, um, there's a few different elements to it. One, I would um, definitely acknowledge the company and, and have some information on the company in the cover letter to make sure that the company understands that the applicant knows that what the company does, that it's tailored to the company specifically. So if there's something that, that they know that the company is especially proud of, definitely put that in the resume and acknowledge that, um, in the cover letter and acknowledge that. And then also focus on maybe putting in two or three accomplishments that um, that the app that the that you have had and like you want to, to emphasize that sort of match what the um, what the company is looking for, and then um, a general paragraph on why you like this particular job in terms of the type of role. So I have done a lot of work in terms of business development and the cover letters I've written. I've written about why business development is exciting to me, why I enjoy it. Um, it's about solving problems. It's about helping folks. So that's that's really like that's important. So in terms of your software developer, or if you're a recent graduate, or other activities, then what are some things that you really want to emphasize why you like that? Because they want an enthusiastic individual. And then in terms of the resume, if you are um, a recent college graduate, maybe you just do one page. If you have a lot of experience, you could do two pages. Um, I generally think that you don't want to do a very long resume. Um, there are some instances where with the federal government, where their resume can be many pages long. Um, but I would say like one or two pages is really a good rule of, fun, rule of thumb. And then also focused on accomplishments and certainly talk about your duties, but um, as wherever you can, emphasize what you've done for a company or organization. That's great advice. Um, 
A any other sort of tidbits um, that folks should put on their resume, make maybe foreign language or, uh, you know, any specific skill? Uh, do you recommend putting that on there? And also, if so, where? You know, because there's also always a question like, do I do that at the top? Do I do it at the bottom? Like the, the positioning of things matters on the resume as well. Well, there's many different ideas on resume. So uh, I can just give you what I think is, is a good idea. And, and there may be in certain instances, based on someone's experience, they may decide to do something different. Um, I would say that it's important to have a summary at the top to talk about who you are so that quickly the recruiter can see in a few lines what type of experience you have, what you bring to the table. And then in terms of skills, certainly any skills that you have that is relevant, um, I would put in there. Like So you can tailor each resume to the, the opportunity. So maybe if you're keeping it down to a page, you want to like tailor it and you may have something that's very interesting for one particular position, but not for another. So you would put that in that resume. So you, you tailor it to each particular position. I know it takes time, but it's worth it. And then certainly the skills, um, as you say, is, is really important to, to include. Um, I would probably put the skills at, at the top, especially if you're a junior person, because you wouldn't have as much experience um, so you want to like empathize what you can do in terms of your skills. That's as amazing. long as the summary. Yeah, yeah that, that's just, this is great, great advice because even like it might seem like small items, but they really set you apart where your resume looks like really sets you apart because that's what the recruiter sees first. So thank you so much. Um, so we just have a couple of minutes left, John. So if you wouldn't mind reminding us about when the career fair is, um, how to participate in it, and if you have any parting world, uh, pearls of wisdom for us about you know, either starting your own business or finding a job in Fairfax County or in Northern Virginia. So um, the career fair is on May 20th. It's going to be um, um, to, to register and find out more information about it. Go to workinnorthernvirginia.com. Um, you'll be able to find it quite easily. And then in terms of like finding out about what's going on in Fairfax County, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at J Gustavo B. Um, that's my handle. So really it's um, J as in John, my first name, Gustavo, which is my middle name, G-U-S-T-A-V as in Victor O, and then B um, is, is in Blair. So J Gustavo B. We have a wide variety of events and all of our events are free. So um, anyone can attend. A couple events that we're having up coming up are um, Michael Saylor is going to be speaking. We're a co-sponsor, Michael Saylor, who's um, very big into Bitcoin and is the CEO of MicroStrategy. And then also we're organizing an autonomous vehicle event um, in mid-June. So the Michael Saylor event is June 17th with the Chamber of Digital Commerce and um, the autonomous vehicle event will be um, in mid-June and we'll talk about what we've done. We have a shuttle, autonomous shuttle, and then we'll also have leading experts on the technology and what it will take to make autonomous vehicles ubiquitous. So, wow, that sounds really out. interesting. I'm going to join that one. The autonomous okay, vehicle cool. one sounds cool. amazing. Well, John, thank you so much for being here. And huge thanks to uh, Fairfax County EDA. Uh, of course, you guys are our supporting sponsors. So we couldn't do this event without you. So thank you for both supporting us, but also coming on uh, on air today and sharing your wisdom. It was definitely super, super helpful. Everyone should register for that uh, career fair. Maybe your your next career or your first break breakthrough into the esports industry is going to be there. So thank you so much, John. And we will be back after a 15 minute break with our entrepreneurship panel. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Maya. Really appreciate it. Wanna when you're next to me, next to me, I can't pretend. You've got me feeling like you're where I wanna be, wanna be. Please don't let me go, I need you right here by my side. So won't you run away with me?